Hey gang, Jack Lair here. Uh, got kind of a wild hair to play Xenosaga Episode 1 and decided that I would try something a little different and just record the whole thing from beginning to end and show it to you guys. Now, this first episode is going to cover uh, pretty much the introduction and the tutorial of the game and then next episode we'll actually get into the meat of it. Now this is, for those of you who don't know, this is an 80 plus hour Japanese RPG heavy with cutscenes and stories and more plot twists than uh, a delicious, delicious red vine. So we start out with the, the digging here and it kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, the beginning setup of John Carter, which wouldn't be out for a while ago, but I love John Carter. It was, it was a really good movie that just, I don't know what happened, just got panned. And then we've got uh, the Indiana Jones guy here. Dr. Masuda. Did you find something? Yeah, we followed the corridor from the lakeside. It matches the location described in the that research must be paper. It. Good. Show us where it is. Yeah, and of course he's an archaeologist. He's got the team digging here. It's different and, from the others. You know. I knew it. No hat, no whip, but he's kind of more of a, a, a Daniel Jackson type of archaeologist. If you remember him from Stargate, very nerdy, wearing the beanie. It's a circle. This must be. Now, okay, so of course he has the thing that fits in there. Because why not? And you may be wondering to yourself what does this have to do with anything? Well, the answer is I have no clue. I'm uh, far enough in the game to kind of know what's going on with a few of the main characters, and far enough to know that I don't know what's going on with most of the characters. But of course, as uh, is wont to happen when you find a gap in an ancient ruin and you have the key to put it in, it causes an earthquake. I want to see the one that, you know, you put the thing in and then outsprings, I don't know, gumdrops or snickers. That would be, that would be cool. But no, always giant things bursting out of the ocean. Magically, that guy can't drive. But I got to say, I was actually fairly impressed going back to the graphics because I know that some when you go back to some games the graphics just look like total crap and this game actually looks pretty good like with a little bit of work they could pop this on PS3 and I would I would think it was a a, a poor PS3 game but I would still believe it was a PS3 game or Xbox or whatever It's the bridge to Terabithia. Not really. And this is the part where I think 2001. It's full of stars. But no, so there's the little medallion that apparently summons the big thing and then it shoots this light goes to the clouds and then it rains in the desert
And then we skip to 4,000 years later. And I still have no clue what that intro had to do with any of the rest of this game. That and I don't know what the subtitle means. I really probably should have looked it up. But there are the two main characters, or the two main characters so far. Wink, wink. Uh, Cosmos and Xion. Xion. Xion? I can't say it right. My emphasis is on the wrong syllable. But here's the chair. There's Xion. And she's going to hop in. she's got her team there and at first I had no clue what was actually going on and I still kind of don't as near as I can figure it is that we're about to go inside a simulation I have no clue what that thing is about that's the big block from the opening from what I can tell it does stuff what it does no clue why everybody wants it? No clue. Commencing startup experiment. Open up an interconnection. Open up an interconnection. Roger. Opening interconnection. Connecting with dummy protocol. A line protocol zone secured. Opening cage partition. 60 seconds to release. Beginning countdown. 57. 56. 55. 54. 53. Why doesn't? Why don't 52. they just have the computer read that off? Never understood that. Alright, so those things are going to get that. And then... It'll keep cutting back and forth to that. Later, dude. All monitors clear. And it's gone. Three, two, one. Partition open. Proceeding with Cosmos body formation. <laughs> They're pointing at her nipples. Formation complete. Commencing pen field mapping. I actually like Cosmos as a character. It's kind of neat in that, well, you'll, Proceeding with you'll see. Construction. It just takes a while to get there. Encephalon construction complete. There's noise appearing in the temporal lobe. What's the problem? It's on the left side of the temporal lobe. I'm showing slight stimulation of the synapses in section 818. It's within permissible bounds. Yeah. So. Blah 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 blah. Yappy yappy yappy. Let's keep going. Just stick to the menu. I'll try for a direct approach. Back me up. Roger. Launching Nataraja connection system. Yeah. So now they know not to touch it. They're gonna bring these things out. And of course, we're going to bring it on board. Because when people touch it, it disappears. So, or they disappear, rather. So why not bring it on board? Sure, it's like a little souvenir. Ye shall be as gods. Commencing Nataraja boot up sequence. I love that effect. I know that it's used in everything, but it's just cool. Now, like I mentioned before, it takes a long time for this to get going. So, if you guys skip ahead to the second episode, or the second part, rather, because their Alan, episode... There anyways. seems to be a problem with the visual field connection. So we learned that this guy's Alan. You'll find out more about him ah, I and see how pathetic he is. 
It looks like the bi-directional He's just the not field is lag too. <sighs> Hold on a minute. I'll fix it now. How is it now, Chief? Okay. Looks good. Let's keep going. Roger. Proceeding with Cosmos host separation. Cosmos. Why they call it Cosmos and not Cosmos? I don't know. Morning, Cosmos. How do you feel? Good morning, Xi'an. All systems are normal. Well, how about introducing yourself? I am an anti-gnosis humanoid fighting system. Serial number zero 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 one. Development name KPX. Abbreviated name Cosmos. As I am currently. How is Cosmos an abbreviation body, of the other one? My limited to twenty-two percent of its normal capacity. My estimated weapon specifications are. All right, that's good enough. Thanks. You are welcome. All I have for you today are the usual startup tests. Sorry to wake you up just for that. You'll have to go back to sleep once everything's checked out. I see. Yeah, she's actually very yappy. Sad or anything? A predetermined set of emotions has been hard coded into my emotion module to better facilitate. Yeah, they yapped like this for a while. In order to better facilitate a relationship with you. As near as I can figure it, Cosmos is Cosmos project an android of some kind and they didn't give her such as sadness only when that response is deemed necessary very much emotion However, they didn't give her much in the way of personality period I mean she's kind of awesome she's time. threatening <laughs> she kind of reminds me oh that's what she reminds me of if you've seen the the Terminator Sarah Connor's Chronicles what she uh, she reminds me a lot of uh, who was it Summer Glau was in that and because she's like super awesome and kicks a whole lot of butt awake, but the fact that you'll go well, she's not all that a bit sad. attached to and anything the other, really the next time you wake up it may be a time of much bloodshed so deep down inside I hope that day never comes yeah, so you might have remembered that she referred to herself as an anti-gnosis fighting machine. The algorithms and have been gnosis are the bad guys. Of illogical human thought. <laughs> well, I hope you'll be able to. So essentially the, someday. the way that it works I will do my best. is that the gnosis are the bad right, guys. Or... Maybe they are. Like I said, I, this is so confusing. We'll see those a little later. Placing target drones in the encephalon. The drones are set to random movement and enemy ambush. How about a test run before the mission, Chief? Sure, let's do that. Did you get that, Cosmos? Affirmative. Okay, so this is the beginning of the tutorial. Virtual tutorial, go figure. And essentially what it is is that you walk up to Cosmos, talk about the different things, and then she sets it up for you, the different scenarios of what you want to learn, and then we go and learn it. I actually kind of like this as a tutorial because it's kind of like, okay, we can learn about normal attacks, tech attacks, submenu attacks, and then you can switch to the real combat and give it a go. So yeah, I started with like, let's do real combat, and then it was like, oh, we'll transport you right back, so we're done. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I have no clue what I'm doing. I came into this game completely blind, not knowing anything about it. And just decided to <laughs> like the weird arm thing that she's got. And it's basically trying to explain combat to you, or to me, and I really don't.
I still really don't quite have a grasp on it. But they've got the different pictures of the people down there. They've got the big pictures up there. They've got the attacks. Three different types of enemies. B, M, and G. So yeah, I see the little B over the side. So one attack does uses two points, and then you can either use another attack, which I just did, or you can end the round. <laughs> These guys explode in a fount of blood that is impressive. Yeah. So basically your square is going to be your punch, kick, sword, and then the triangle is going to be your magic type or zappy shooty thing. And at the end of battle, one of them says some random little quippy phrase. Usually it's annoying. Like I think at one point, uh, Xion will ask if all the data yeah, and for some reason there's actually an in-game thing to where when you come out of being attacked, your body flashes. Called the body flashing phenomenon. Sorry about that, Yon. I'm recording this really late, uh, but I wanted to get it done. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to talk to you about tech attacks. And this actually becomes really important. Uh, kind of towards the midpoint of the game because what it is is that like I said every attack uses two points or at least most of them do and what you can do is you can actually do one of two things to carry those over it is that I don't know what menu system I'm in but you can do guard which I just came on and the guard will take up two points but it'll lower damage so the next round you have six points and can use your super awesome thing. Or what you can do is just do one attack and then exit. Yeah, I'm playing with buttons, turning things off, turning things on. The boost, it explains later, but that is basically you fill up the boost meter at the top. And you can actually skip rounds into combat, which is kind of cool. So basically the more... See it filled up a little bit of red up there, a little bit more. Defeat this enemy with a tech attack. Da da da. There, see, guarding is another effective method. So you can always use, also do the FG shot, which is something different, but then it actually has ammo in it. And I don't like to use the. I don't like to use things that use up ammo. I'm the weird kind of guy that I don't use, like if I get like special potions, like this is a potion of uh, plus five to attack, I'll never use it. Cause I'll hoard it until like I, I might need this one day. And then not realizing that, you know, I should actually have used it eight times ago. The one exception was, uh, there was a Final Fantasy that had a dragon, that it was an undead dragon that the I don't know, you had to use an item on it and kill it instantly. It was actually pretty cool. I believe it was six, five, six or five. I don't remember which one. But here it's showing you that there are combos. So she can either push circle and do her super awesome attack, or she can do the combos. And they get a weird little like summon cutscene. Not quite to the extent of Knights of the Round, but, you know, somewhere in the middle there. Contents are ammo, EP consumed, and AP. So the AP are the attack points. You always need six for one of the special attacks. And... Yeah, so this is her... 
Super 1. And if you look up any of the figures of Cosmos, uh, which oh, I'd really love to have one, but I'm pretty sure that if I put it on my desk at work, I would look a little like a creep. Because she's not wearing much, and she's got giant guns, which is cool and all, but no, I don't think I'd, I don't think of my work desk it would work well. So there we're learning. Okay, so she's gonna do, and I'm gonna do the lightning bolt with her. Which they're actually kind of cool. And of course the blood sprays everywhere. Get a little bit of experience. The experience screen, and it keeps track of your time, which is very annoying. I still have no clue what the money's for. Uh, I'm four or five hours in the game at this point. Still never came across the money. Sub menus. Oh yeah, it's gonna go through the the different sub menus because nothing's you know it's not called like hey these are items and these are such and such. So there's ether and you'll see more about these later on in later videos just because right now I really didn't have a lot so there wasn't any point Yeah, there's a grid of like six different spots. So if you think of it, there are, there are three front row and three back row. So it's not like, uh, once again, comparing it to Final Fantasy, where you just shift back and forth between the front and the back row. You can actually position yourself in the front or the back row. And that becomes a little more important later on when you get uh, more characters, and especially when you start using the the AGWS, the anti-something weapon system, anti-gnosis weapon system. Which, as you'll see later in the game, really doesn't do anything to them. Yeah, so it's setting the boost counter at 2. can boost the characters. Yeah. So you basically hold the trigger, push the button, and then it boosts that character. Yeah. And then you can skip ahead so you can boost and come right after the character. This takes a little while to figure out because it is fairly unintuitive. Oh, the little roulette wheel thing. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I, um, eh, I don't really care for it. Because it doesn't really change my... Maybe at high level play, it'll come and it'll have more of an effect, but right now it's just, you know, I have to kill the person on the other side. There's nothing I can do about that. I have to use my attacks. Now, I'm sure later on you can kind of be like, okay, well, I need to... I'm gonna use this light attack, and then if I do this heavy attack later, then I'll get the crit, and then special points. Uh, da -da. Yeah. It's got... This is screwy. So it's got E points, ether points. It's got skill points. E points you spend for new ether. Skill points you spell for new skills. Tech points you spend for new skill. And you get experience points, which actually levels you. Confused yet? Yeah, I know. And there are different uh, charts, and depending on what you have is what you can actually use. So it just depends.
And they explode in a fount of blood. Yeah, see, I'm still trying to figure out how to do the boost thing. There. I figured it out. I got it. I'm hip. I'm with it. <laughs> Not really. But yeah, so this is uh, basically how it goes. And there. So we're... You'll find out who Miyuki is later, too, by the way. So... By the way, I love that noise. I want that as, like, my text noise. Just that little... However you make that noise. But, so now we're gonna go to real combat. And actually get... Without all the tutorial stuff we're actually gonna do some real combat and then we actually get to start the game I know right we yes we're still in the tutorial folks we'll be in the tutorial for most of next episode too now that I think about it well not really the tutorial we'll actually get to play some of the game which is weird but excuse me so we actually fall down this weird psychedelic hole and now they're two little dudes and the weird little bug thing or droid target locked on commencing combat mode commencing combat mode Yeah, so you can look down in the corner and actually see the the attack mode, the, or the attack order, rather. And that way you can see which one you can defeat first, and then go on from there. It's kind of like what you used to do in uh, older games where you'd be like, Okay, so I know that guy's already gone, so he won't attack me again, so I want to attack the second guy. Because if I kill him, he won't get a chance to attack me. And basically there is a weird sort of... Yeah, B biotype, M mech type, G gnosis type. So we've got drone F, attack drone, drone M. So we've got a bu two bios and a mechanical. And from I, later on, it gets even weirder because you're like, okay, I, this is a Gnosis. Do I have an attack that hurts Gnosis? I don't know. Yeah, so I basically, I like to do the, the power ones. So I'm basically going to do a lot of the first attack. And I do like the fact that the guys actually cross the battlefield. I'm still used to most of them where the people just swing their sword or whatever. And nothing really happens. So she is not really good at combat. I mean, I don't know what she's good at. And this is kind of cool. Yeah. Because we all know the arm cannons are good, right? Mega Man taught us that. And we've got one lonely guy left. And... Pretty much gonna decimate him. Yeah, so there it is. Uh, there's the tutorial and the first beginnings of Xenosaga Episode 1. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, part 2 will be up next week, February 13th, 2012. And as always, play on!